Welcome to the White House. You're running bedtime for Bonzo, maybe? <laughs> well, we're here for the... Wait a minute, what am I talking about? I got the wrong notes, really, for, for real there. I just came in here, actually, to thank you, and at the same time that I'm thanking you for all you've done and for all the support that you've been to us and the things we've been trying to do and that I know Don has been talking about here, uh, at the same time, I have to ask you something also. Carry on and keep on helping, because this job isn't finished. I think government has stopped spending more than it, or is, must be stopped from spending more than it takes in. Tax cuts and spending cuts and regulatory relief and monetary stability are now always popular with everyone, but they've gotten the job at least started, a job that must be finished, and that is the job of putting us on the recovery road, economic recovery. And you have been the strength of our support. Now we're faced with a lot of born-again budget balancers. It's surprising to me to find the people that have been a part of the machinery that for a half a century here have said that deficit spending was all right, we owed it to ourselves. And suddenly they have decided that budget deficits are as bad as we've been saying they were for all these recent decades. And uh, I know that you've been briefed by Don, by Joe Wright, on specifics of our budget proposal. And I know you're going to hear from Marty Feldstein. And the sum of our message and their message, I think, is common sense. Uh, I know I'm accused of oversimplifying things. But if we can just look at government and look at government's problems, we have to see that really all that's needed to solve the problem is the same common sense that you have to use in business every day and people have to use in their homes every day. And I don't know why government should be exempt from that same kind of common sense. You can't pour more out of the bucket than is in the bucket. And uh, I've had years of building up a series of horror stories about uh, government and government overhead. One of my favorites used to be uh, about the local community that decided they were going to, going to raise their signs, their street signs up two feet, they'd be more, more visible, better able to be seen from automobiles and all. And uh, the federal government said they had a program to help doing that, and that they would fund it. Their program called for lowering the streets two feet. Uh, but I have one that's for real that I have told our people over and over again. When I was governor of California, an example was that there was a part of the poverty program that came to us and it was going to take 17 people off of welfare, able-bodied people, and put them to work taking care of the county parks in Ventura County, California. Well, now that sounds like something I would be heart and soul in favor of. The governor is permitted under that, or was permitted under that program to veto, but the veto was only good for 60 days, and in that 60 days, the Congress could come in and reverse your, override your veto. My veto was never overridden, and I think because they didn't dare face in public the reason for the veto. I wasn't objecting to 17 people leaving welfare and being given jobs in the county parks. I was objecting to 50% of the budget for that going to 11 administrators to make sure that the 17 got to work on time. <laughs> so all I can say again is uh, don't let up and uh, we'll keep doing what we've been doing and uh, who knows, we might even have a few more years to stay at it if everything works out all right. Thank you very much.